Okay, hi, it's Dr. Beaufort. We're just getting started on the left shoulder. We're looking at from the back to the front. Everything that you see is magnified 30 or 40 times on the screen. Uh, we've got a great cannula coming in here. The opening in that cannula is about six millimeters, just to give you an idea. Um, maybe a quarter of an inch, if, if that much. And you can see some fraying in some of the structures here. Now, you're laying on your side just to orient you. So the ball part of the ball and socket joints at the top of the screen, the glenoid or the socket parts down below here, your biceps tendon is this strong cord-like structure here, and you can see it's difficult to see the biceps because this torn rotator cuff is hanging down right in front of it. So there's the torn rotator cuff right there. So um, we're going to look at the biceps, decide if we have to do anything to it. I'm going to take a shaver and uh, hold that for a second. Let me give it a little more slack. Hold this with your other hand. We're going to uh, take that shaver and... Um, evaluate the biceps anchor here and see if it's loose. If it is, we'll do a type of tenodesis that we can show you in just a second, but we have to make the diagnosis first. So here's our shaver. We'll go ahead and turn it on. It has suction attached to it. So what we're debriding here first is the labrum. Okay. And now we can look at the biceps anchor, and that looks okay. And it's a little bit loose. It's right on the edge. So you can see here some chondral degeneration. Here's the rotator cuff tear right here. We're going to debride this a little bit more, too. Okay, and then the tear also involves this insertion right here. So open up a free hi-fi suture for me, please. Um, I'm a little bit suspicious about this biceps. I'm concerned because the rotator cuff tear, at least at this point, doesn't appear to be full thickness on this side. Now, a lot of times we'll see this, and on the other side of the tendon, it's got a significant partial tear also, so it ends up being the same thing as being completely torn. But I'm concerned that your biceps is involved in some of your symptoms because of how torn it is. So uh, hold the hold this for a second. I'm going to push. Go ahead and twist that off. Yeah, keep going. We're going to go ahead and leave in. Uh, let me get the orange again. We're going to go ahead and leave in the shape, the uh, cannula here. Actually, it goes. And I'm going to take a spinal needle and show you how we do the biceps tenodesis. Spinal. Okay, so here and in just a minute, you'll see the uh, you'll see the spinal needle coming through the biceps. I'm going to focus a little bit here. So there we are coming right through the middle of the biceps. We're going to feed a black wire called the shuttle relay. We'll take a grasper to Myra, right? Grasper and her grasper. Put that in the gray cannula. And then there you can see the black wire that we're going to grab. And sometimes with a little luck, we can just open and grab it right now. And then we'll hold still. And I back the needle out. We do that so that the needle doesn't cut the black wire. Here you go. And then we'll go ahead and pull out. Uh-huh. All the way out. And now stop. Open. And now we'll take a free suture and load it right here. So outside your shoulder, we're loading a suture through an eyelet. We just load about an inch of it through. About an inch. And then we hold tight, a little bit less, and then hold the eyelet right there just like that, and then hold it until I pull through. Perfect. So you can see on the screen how that, how that pulls through the biceps right there. So now we're going to do the same thing one more time. So we'll take the spinal needle back and a grasper back also.
Okay, so now we've got the second wire pass. Look how we're going to go behind the biceps this time, though. And we'll retrieve the relay. Hold the gray cannula. Just hold it so it doesn't pull out. Just hold tight. Okay. You can let go there. And now we'll go ahead and load that. So outside your shoulder, we're going to load the relay one more time. Here you go. Got it? Okay, just hold it all the way in. And you can see how that comes through. So the reason why we do it that way is because it gives us a purse string stitch around the biceps, if you look. So you can see how when we pull tight on that suture, this gives us a very tight hold on the biceps tendon. So I'm very happy with that. So next we'll take a, a pair of arthroscopic scissors. And we'll go ahead and cut the biceps at its base here. Just like that. Okay. And so now the next step is to pass a hi-fi suture across this rotator cuff tear. So just like we did with the biceps, we're going to use a spinal needle and a shuttle relay and a free suture. So we'll take a grasper in the front. I'm going to show you some more in just a minute. Okay, so now we're going to take this black wire, pass it through one more time. You can see this time we're over on the anterior side of this rotator cuff tear. We're going to go ahead and grab it with the grasper again. Go ahead and push through the can. You can use two hands if you... Uh-huh, grab it and then hold still. Okay, we'll go ahead and back the needle out. We'll pull out the relay. Uh-huh, pull. And then we'll load that. Great. We'll load the uh, eyelet with a free suture again. Okay, so here you can see this black and white suture going on the anterior side of the tear. We're going to take the spinal needle and pass it now on the posterior side. About like that. And that looks pretty good, so we'll go ahead and pass a relay through there. Okay. No, load the same one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to load the other end of that black and white suture. <clears throat> inch by an inch. And we'll pull back. And you can see how that's going to give us a loop. See how that's going to, it's going to go across there, function as a ripstop stitch. So now we're going to take the spinal needle one more time. Okay, great. And now we're going to do a slightly different stitch. Trying to come in right at the insertion. That's not bad there. We'll feed a relay through there. And I need another suture but besides blue and black and white. Okay, so now we're loading one more time. We'll pull that suture through. And now we're going to make our final pass with our spinal needle. We're still going to look at this tendon on the other side. If there's any concern at all that it's got a more extensive tear on the other side, we always have the option of using a suture anchor. I think that's where we're going to go there. Um, we'll pass the relay one more time and show you some more in a minute. Okay, so you can see how we've got this kind of stitch. We've got a cross stitch here to help 
pull this cuff, and now we're going to go ahead and stop inside the joint and get to work in the subacromial space. We can see that there's not much arthritis. The rest of the joint actually looks pretty good. No significant fraying, no signs of any other significant um, instability. We'll put the shaver in just gently for a minute and maybe debride a little bit more, but the next thing we show you on the video will be in the subacromial space. Okay, so we're in the subacromial space, anteriors to the left, posteriors to the right. We've got a burr in here just to smooth off the anterior edge of the acromion right here. I've already had a peek at the rotator cuff, so I know the answer to the question, but I'm going to show you in just a second here. That's the clavicle we're working on there. And what we're doing is just making sure there's plenty of space for the repaired rotator cuff. I think we're going to stop there. You can see all these sutures that we passed at the beginning of the case. So we're going to put the shaver back on here. And I want to show you where this tendon's torn on this side. Remember at the beginning of the case I said that sometimes Careful. The tendon's torn on both sides, and we end up having to repair it like a full thickness tear, and that's exactly what's going on. Look here. You can see a hole in the tendon right there. So we're going to go ahead and open up the tear right here. And repair this as a small full thickness tear. Okay, so here's the tear right there. We've opened it up to make it a predictable repair. One set of sutures we don't need anymore since we're going to anchor this down to bone. We'll use the black and white sutures as our ripstop suture. But there you can see the tear right there. So what we're going to do next is we'll take a spinal needle. Actually, before we do that, let's see here. Take those and pull that. That's trash. Okay, so we're going to take a spinal needle. We're going to check our angle. which I'm trying to avoid the tattoos also. It looks like that's going to be a pretty good spot right there to place the suture rank, or maybe a little bit anterior. So we'll take a scalpel. We'll go ahead and pull the spinal needle. And then we're going to take a, a guide that we use to place our suture anchor. So there you can see the metal guide coming in. Now we'll pull back and place the anchor. Uh -huh, pull up, pull up. No, just the round thing. Yep, and put the anchor in there. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so now, got it. So now we look at the articular surface, which is right there. That's going down into the joint. And what we're going to do next is very gently start to tap. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, so our anchor's in the bone. You can see it right here. I'm going to take the gray cannula now. We're going to take out one of the posterior sutures. Which would be this one right here. So we'll hold that gray cannula steady. We'll pull out that suture. And now the next step, we're going to put a grasper in that gray cannula.
And then I'm going to show you how we use our suture hooks. Left, next. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put your left hand on here too. Just left hand, or this hand there, this hand holds the light cord. So we're going to hold right about there. Our suture hook is right here. You can see we're going to try and place a stitch right across the tear here. We're going to get some of these sutures out of the way. So there's our tear. We're going to pull this down and reduce it. We're going to pass a stitch. Get all the way down just like that. That looks pretty good. And then once we feed the pull back, we'll feed the relay. And retrieve that just like that. Pause. Long press on that button. Okay, so now we're just getting the partner suture here. So that's going to be one stitch. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, have a look at our ripstop stitch for a minute. Yeah, I'm just going to gently tie that right about now. So what you'll see here is we're going to take two sutures. I need the blue. Okay, two hands on this so you keep me on the screen. Right there. Can she get a step? You have a step stool? Okay, so there. What we've done is we've taken the two blue sutures out of the way. Now I'm going to take a crochet hook. And we're going to get the two ripstop sutures. I got it for a second. Inside this cannula so we can tie them. There's one. There's the other one. These are the sutures I placed at the beginning of the case. Hold that right there. From inside the joint. And we'll show you why we call these a ripstop suture in just a second. Tie this. Yeah. Pause. To the left next. Okay, so we've tied what we call a ripstop stitch. You can see that. That allows us to pass sutures behind that and give us a little bit stronger repair. Got it. So now I'm going to take the next suture in line. The reason I tied that first is because I've got two black and white sutures and I didn't want to be uh, confused by which was which. So now we're going to take this one. Hold the gray cannula for me. Uh-huh. And now we're going to take our next pass. We'll take a grasper to the front and to the gray cannula, please. You can see this hook is called a turn to the right. We're using that same black wire. There it is there. So we'll place that in. We don't need to see it, but we're just going to hold things right about there. You can pull it back a little bit and hold things right about there. Uh-huh. And so now with this, let me give you the scope. I'm going to trade you right now. Here you go. Take that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I'm going to hold this. We know we want to reduce it about like that. I'm going to pass the stitch back here. And there it is coming underneath. I like that. I'll show you some more in just a minute. Pause. Okay, so now we're going to get the final suture coming from an anchor, which is this blue and white suture. We'll pull this out the back this time. And now we're going to be passing a stitch from the front. So we're going to take out the gray cannula. Make sure that stays there. We'll take a grasper in the back of the shoulder, which will be coming through the blue cannula on the right. There it is there. And now we'll take a suture hook. This is going to be turned to the what we call turned to the right. There it is coming in there. There's our tear. You can see the type of stitch we're trying to do is just like that. We're going to try and come down here. Can you hold the camera right there? And 
and there it is coming underneath. That's a good bite right there. So I'm happy with those suture suture uh, passes through the tendon. We'll show you some more in just a minute. Pause. What we're doing now is getting all of the sutures inside this um, posterior cannula. Actually, we're going to take them all inside the anterior cannula. Hold that right there. And then we're going to tie them one at a time from posterior. So we'll start with these blue and white sutures right here. Okay, keep that cannula in. And then we'll get these black and white sutures next. And then finally, we'll get the uh, the solid blue sutures last. These are actually the ones we're going to tie first. The reason we go through all these steps with these sutures is so that we don't get any twists or tangles in our knots. So now we're ready to start tying these. So we're going to tie these solid blue sutures first. You can see how they're inside the cannula. And that's going to be our first knot. We'll pull tight on these other ones. There we go. Okay. So we'll show you a knot right there in a minute. Okay. So we've tied two out of the three sutures coming from the anchor. We'll pull back on this a little bit. You can show you. So there's the first one, the solid blue. We've got a black and white one. We've got our ripstop stitch, of course. And now we're going to tie the final suture coming from the anchor, which is the blue and white. So we'll get this tied, show you some more in just a minute. Okay. Hold that. Okay, so we've got all the sutures in for the cuff repair. The last two you see here are for the biceps tendon. <laughs> and we're going to reach in and tie those now in just a second. Hold that right there. Okay, so we'll show you the finished results in just a minute. We're just tying the final suture as part of the surgery. Okay, so we've tied the bicep suture. That's the solid blue one right there. Anteriors to the left. I'm going to rotate your arm, and you'll see how your tendon moves as a very solid unit. Now we've got a ripstop stitch in. We've got three sutures tied from an anchor. There's one suture there, two. See how that one goes over the ripstop? And then three, That even that one goes over the ripstop there on the left, the blue and white one. So as we rotate, that looks very good. I'm very happy with the way that looks. We're going to finish up here and get you back to the recovery room. Good luck to you now. Bye-bye. <laughs>